Welcome to my channel. This is the first video that I've done since moving back to the LA area. And what I thought I would do is come back downtown LA and get sort of reacquainted with the city. The downtown area on the weekends, it is alive and vibrant. I'm starting here at Bunker Hill, which is where Angel's Flight is located. Angel's Flight is the shortest railroad in the world at 298 feet. <laughs> Back in the late 1800s, Bunker Hill is where all of the rich and fashionable people in LA lived. Here's a photograph from that era. Notice that huge house there on the hill? That house was located there. Now you can't live in a la-di-da house like that and be expected to walk down the hill to do your shopping and walk back up again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That will not do at all. So in 1901, Angel's Flight was opened to carry people up and down the hill. And they also built a tunnel under Bunker Hill. So if you needed to get to the other side, you could avoid the hill altogether. Today, Angel's Flight has been moved a half block to the south. So let's take a ride on the world's shortest railway. Across the street from Angel's Flight is the Grand Central Market. Grand Central Market opened in this location in 1917 and it's been in continuous operation since. What makes Grand Central Market so unique is that it's not a single market, but a collection of individual markets in a single location. Across the street from the Grand Central Market is the famous Bradbury Building. The Bradbury Building is sadly closed because of the pandemic, but you can look through the windows and see some of its grandeur. Built in 1893, it's the oldest commercial building still standing in LA. The interior will transport you back in time with its gorgeous black iron railings, the open cage elevators, marble stairs, and a central natural light filled interior court that spans almost 50 feet. This is Pershing Square. Pershing Square is part of Los Angeles Parks. It was dedicated as a park in 1866. During World War I, it was frequently used as a reception area for the militia and a forum for public speakers. So one week after the end of World War I, in November of 1918, it was renamed Pershing Square in honor of General John J. Pershing. Today, it's a fantastic outdoor space that is mostly shut down because of the pandemic. But let me show you all of the interesting things that are in this park. In the southeast corner are three statues, a cannon, and some orange balls. This statue was built in 1900 to honor the 7th Regiment from the Spanish-American War. Listed are the soldiers in the 7th Regiment who gave their lives for our freedoms. They're not suckers, they're not losers, they're American heroes. This is also the oldest work of public art in Los Angeles. In 1924, this statue, called the Doughboy, was erected to honor those who died in World War I. Again, heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice for America. 
Look at this old cannon. It's called Old Ironside. This was an actual cannon from the USS Constitution, and it was used against French privateers in 1798. It's dedicated to the memory and the valor of all veterans who have served under the American flag. In 1934, a statue of Beethoven was added. All right, this is a little incongruous. <laughs> <laughs> but its purpose is to celebrate a love for the art of music. During the Depression, Los Angeles was one of the few cities that was able to continue its annual music season. During the unveiling in 1934, one of the speakers said that the statue is a reminder that in hard times, it's important to remember the finer, sweeter qualities of life. I think that's a message that still resonates today. Aside from these statues, there is a lot of public art here in Pershing Square. Artist Barbara McCarran was commissioned for a project called Hay Day, and the art is representative of the local history. These orange balls, for example, are called Orange Grove. Orange groves used to dominate the Los Angeles landscape, and in fact, Orange County is named Orange County because there were so many orange groves. These, however, are inspired by the Wolfskill Orange Grove, which was very near Pershing Square in 1850. This is called the Star Walk, and it has three meanings. The first are the literal constellations in the sky. It's very hard to see in Los Angeles now because of all the light pollution. The second meaning is it's representative of the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame. This That's a very active park. <laughs> and the third meaning is the stargazing that people do with movie stars. I don't know if you remember the season of American Idol that Carrie Underwood was on. It was very early in the season. Everyone had just come to Hollywood and Ryan Seacrest was interviewing her. She said she had been going around taking a lot of pictures and he said, have you seen any stars? She shook her head and said, no, it's been too overcast. He paused a beat and said, I meant movie stars. <laughs> and that was the minute I fell in love with her. <laughs> This is called a fault line with tidal fountain. The fault line is a reference to the San Andreas Fault, which when it shifts causes earthquakes. But it's also inspired by chapter 13 in John Fonte's 1939 novel entitled Ask the Dust, which is set in downtown Los Angeles. The fault line leads to what's supposed to be a fountain, but as you can see, the fountain isn't on. I'm not sure if that's because of the pandemic or because of the drought, or maybe it's just broken. These are one of my favorite art installations. These three telescopes represent three eras in Los Angeles's history. This one, 1888. This one is 1943. And this one represents the present. On the back of this bench is a quote by 20th century writer Carrie McMillan that describes Pershing Square as a microcosm of Los Angeles. These benches, you can't sit on them right now. They're embedded with historic postcards. Over on this side are a series of photographs by fine arts photographer Fred Hoare from a project he calls River System. This is fantastic, even more so in the age of Amazon. This is the entrance to the last bookstore, which is the largest new and used bookstore in California. If you're a book nerd like me, this place is heaven. When I die, this is where I want to go. But if you're not a book nerd, it's still got some pretty cool things to see. The real magic is on the second floor. I swear this is something out of a Harry Potter novel. It's magical.
There are some other smaller stores on the second floor. Wait, vintage cameras? I need to check this out. Okay, I couldn't help myself. I bought an antique 1950s Ansco Flex 2 film camera. I can't wait to try it out. I love Amazon, but honestly, there is nothing on Amazon that can compete with this. Look, a book window. And check out this book tunnel. It leads to a book vault. So far, we've stayed in a small section of downtown. We started at Angel's Flight, then went to the Grand Central Market, then to the Bradbury Building. We spent some time in Pershing Square, and then we went a couple of blocks east to the last bookstore. Now, we're gonna walk about 20 minutes to the Garment District. We're going to Santee Alley. You're gonna wanna make sure you have your mask on for this. Santee Alley is an outdoor shopping experience of over 150 stores selling pretty much everything, including purses. Hey, I'm doing my part to help the economy. Anyway, Santee Alley started when wholesale vendors would sell their overstocks literally out their back doors. In the 70s and 80s, immigrants would come to the alley, set up a shop for several days a week until they could open a retail store full time. Today, Santee Alley is retail. It's open seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're gonna leave Santee Alley and head back where we came from to St. Vincent's Court. A few blocks from the bookstore is St. Vincent's Court, which is an alley that looks like you have stepped into a small European village. Do you remember the age of the huge department stores? Bullock's department store opened next to this alley and they used this alley for shipping and receiving. And it became such a popular meeting place that they started leasing out some of these small areas. So like little restaurants and espresso shops started popping up. In the 1950s, it was redecorated to look like a small European village. So that is the end of today's downtown tour. If you like what you see in here, please consider subscribing to my channel, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. There's definitely more to see downtown, so we will be coming back. Thank you for watching.